Sabarim, I'm Stephen Ben Danun, and we are here live, live in Israel on the eve of Yom Kippur. The sun is setting to my left, so soon Yom Kippur will begin officially, and the Day of Atonement, as we know it in English, will begin. It is the most solemn day in Israel's time in the, in, in the year. It is the day where God had commanded Moshe, the prophet, to take, according to Leviticus 23, we were to take two, two goats. One would be offered as a sacrifice for the sins of Israel. The other, the high priest would confess the sins of Israel over the head of the goat and he would be taken out by a strong man into the wilderness and would be released. Now the strange thing is, in this particular thing, I've often wondered, could this law have come from when God dealt with Joseph? Many years before, in the story of Joseph, we, f we find that Joseph had actually taken, and much like the very sacrifici sacrificial ceremony that God did with Joseph, or uh, that God did with Moses, with the temple customs, we find in the life of Joseph as well. He was much like the, the scapegoat in the case of the children of Israel and Jacob's sons. When Jacob's sons had rejected him, he had had the visions that one day that, his, that, that, that the other sheaves would bow to his sheaf. And his father watched it, his mother. They watched the dreams that he had, very interesting dreams that he had. And then the time does come. They do not recognize Joseph to be the spiritual leader that he was. And his brothers, from their jealousy of who he was, they got angry with him when they seen him coming. His father had sent him to check upon him. And they take, they bind him, they throw him into the ditch. And Joseph is now in an awkward situation. Joseph is then taken by the Ishmaelites down into Egypt. He sold to Pontifer's wife. Uh, Arthur Pontifer himself, sorry, not his wife, but Pontifer. And uh, he ends up being falsely accused. He's thrown into a prison. Everything that his brothers had done to him, their sins had been placed upon him and carried away from the side of Jacob. Yaakov, as we call him, the Jewish people, we call him Yaakov. None of the children, no one knew. Yaakov never knew what his sons had done to their brother. But the odd thing was, though, is that when they're going back, they have to give an account to their father of what actually happened to him. So the only thing they could think to do was they took his coat of long sleeves and they tore, tore it a little bit. They killed a goat and took the blood of the goat and placed it on his coat. And they take it back to Yaakov and they said, can you discern, is this your son's coat or no? And of course, Yaakov knows it's his son's coat and he mourns and weeps bitterly for the loss of his son. In this case here, we clearly see the law that God gave Moses with Moshe. With Moshe, God gave them this law and in the law that he gave Moshe, there was the sacrificial goat, which is exactly what was offered. And then there was the scapegoat, which is what Joseph became. He became the scapegoat that bore the sins, in this case, of the children of Israel, away from their father's eyes, Yaakov. Now, oddly enough, the story gets repeated here in Israel. 2,000 years ago, when another Yosef, so to speak, the son of Yosef in this case, he comes on the scene. The difference, though, in the story here is we're not dealing with all the tribes of Israel at this point. Well, even then, it wasn't all the tribes of Israel because Benjamin, Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, or Benjamin at this time, he had nothing to do with Jacob's or with Joseph's disappearance, with Joseph being sold. In fact, it's kind of ironic because when Joseph does reveal himself to his brethren later, they come down into Egypt, they're dying. 
he reveals himself to him. And Benjamin was not guilty, but it was really ironic that he takes at the last moment, not counting the times where he puts their food back in the bag and their money, you know, because you cannot buy. You cannot buy repentance. You cannot buy forgiveness. You cannot buy salvation. But he takes with Benjamin and he places his cup, Joseph's cup, in Benjamin's bag. Interestingly enough, the innocent son is found holding the cup, only showing a time would come that the tribe of Benjamin would be held responsible for the very cup they would hold their guilt. And we know in the other story, the story of Yeshua, Jesus, as many call him, he was sold out as well. And he too, he too, had a cup called a communion cup. And one of his own brethren betrayed him. Now, in this case, we didn't have the, the, the tribes that we had. You have to remember, Joseph wasn't, of course, he was Joseph. He wasn't privy of his own, own demise, and neither was Benjamin. But the other ten tribes were. But when Yeshua comes, now it's the tribe of Judah, the Levites, and the tribe of Benjamin, and the Samaritans, of course. But he was sold out as well. This is why the cup was placed in Benjamin's bag. It was a prophetic movement on the part of Yosef, Joseph that is, showing that there would time, come a time in the future where Benjamin would be guilty. And it would come a time in the future when the children of Israel today who were not there, who were not part of the crime, would have the cup on our back. And we would have to discern, what would we do with Joseph, with Yeshua? I'm Stephen Bindanun, live from Israel, at the Galilee and the Golan. Baruch Hashem, v'gam ani ocheb orcha, v'gam ani ocheb orchem gadol me'ad. Baruch Hashem. Amen. Live.